This is Twit. Boy, do we have a bunch of headlines today. Yeah, well, we can only do the top three. We don't have to do a lot. I just, I picked three good ones. Well, but there's uh, a, yours. a lot of good stuff. So my oh. favorite okay. of the batch, if I may. Yes. Hey, this is Rod dropping in for about 10 minutes in the future. We said curiosity in this story, but what we really meant to say was the Perseverance rover. Forgive us. Was the discovery by the Curiosity rover. Dun, dun, dun. Uh, yeah, well, this is a <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Because it has come across a rock and they're being careful. We're not having another ALH4001. What, what was the? 18 zero. Yeah, we're not having another. Hey, 45. there's. There's life in that there meteor with Bill Clinton episode, but it has found a rock that looks like it might have fossils in it. Yeah, this is really well, or that it has the signs of that. Yeah, that's. Do you do you want to go into this one? It's your pals at JPL. Uh, no, go ahead. Or, yeah, go ahead. It. But it, but it's both physical properties uh, or visible uh, resemblance and physical properties, right? Oh yeah, it's like it's got all the things. I mean, NASA went all out on this they made like a video and then they made like a tiktok and then they made a uh, like oh here's all the pictures of it uh they even have a little animation of curiosity uh looking down at the rock like in disbelief as it looks back at the <laughs> its selfie camera uh, but but for people who don't know they have a really interesting uh instrument on the curiosity rover called sherlock you know wink wink nudge nudge and right, uh, right. It's, it's 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 designed to look at uh at microscopic views of of stuff that um rocks that uh that the, the the rover you know gets up close to or or digs into or whatnot and it was looking at this this vein filled rock called uh i'm sure i'm going to get this wrong uh chayava falls is what they they nicknamed it. it's like an arrowhead shaped rock um mm. and they found not one not two but three intriguing signs uh that we'll talk about in a minute um that uh, uh that give them hope that they might have found like a, a new another like great target for uh to hunt for life uh the first is what we've seen from the uh, the older mars rovers these modules not nodules nod module nodules, these, nodules yeah these yeah. nodules of of olivine uh which is a, a mineral on earth that is formed in the presence of water uh you might recall that the opportunity found little blueberries made of that stuff uh, all around its landing site and and they found that in uh in this rock slate they also found a really strange red stripe across like the center of the rock and the red stripe uh was uh I'm, I'm gonna get it wrong because there's this other stuff that's in it too yeah it's it's um the hematite the hematite was the what the blueberries were made out of yeah that's right um and the hematite is also you know one of the uh the the, the water formed molecules well right. that's great too but then there's these white veins around the red stripe uh which they say are these white calcium sulfate veins so you've got this calcium sulfate stuff you've got this hematite stuff you have the olivine and nasa has said that when they see that stuff on earth right it's it's with uh fossil record studies of little microscopic fossils and and whatnot and oh my gosh did they find signs of life on mars we don't know they're saying that curiosity has done all that it can because it's a robot it's not a scientist and uh and we really need to get samples back and uh, there was a really cool i put this one on um in the on the rundown uh john it's uh line 22 uh, there's a really important thing i wanted to stress this is not proof of life on mars in fact the new york times uh, among others said very clearly in their headline nasa did not say it found life on mars but it's very excited about this rock you know and so um but you can tell that the folks at JPL are really excited in their announcement. They included all these videos and they're super excited about like why they think this is great. And, uh, you know, it's just, it's another reason why we got to get those samples back, uh, back on earth rock. But, uh, but you know, it may not be critters, but it could, it could be something. It's got these spots that they're really excited in that red stripe, these leopard spots. And that's what, why they're, they're, they're comparing it to fossil records on earth and saying, I don't know. Maybe we got it, you know. <laughs> Getting samples back is important, but uh, we'd all rather much, much rather get a geologist up there. That's right. The chance know? of getting those things in a sample are, are not great. Well, but, and, and, but I mean, and, and oh, go ahead, go huh? ahead. 
Well, I just got to say, you know, I was talking to somebody about JPL layoffs last night. Actually, it's uh, our friend Pascal Lee, some of his his uh, grad students he's advising because they're down here for a Mars conference at Caltech. And, you know, when you see what JPL's JPL has gone through in terms of staff cuts in the last uh, couple of quarters, you know, finding a likely indicator of possible fossilized life on Mars, I think I put enough conditions on that, would be really good for them because they could use the, they're getting their budget back and indeed an increase. And I mean, this, you know, what a big moment if this happens, you know, these aren't eight legged thoats or anything, but if this does turn out to be the real deal, it has major implications for philosophy, theology, uh, science, of course, and, and a lot of other things. And we'll kind of sh- I mean, a lot of us will be really excited. Some people will be kind of shook up, I think. Yeah. Yeah. I tell you, it's like, it's like, what's, what's next? We're really, we're really excited at space.com following the story for like, try to get some interviews with the scientists. Also ask that question. If it's true, what does it mean? And also explain why they're being so cautious when they had, and that was it 1992 when they announced the, the possible life on Mars right. with, with, with the ALH meteorite, that was like a televised press conference yeah. and like a rah, rah, rah. That was an embarrassing it. moment. Wasn't and it? then, and then, and then uh, uh, they had to back off on that. And, and they say in this announcement too, that there's a, some mineralogical, uh, types of, of of reasons why they could see this stuff and they would need to figure out uh, what it all means. But this could be like a really big deal. And uh, uh, trying to grab this stuff and, and bring it back uh, would be really excited. Also, I don't remember the, the thoats being eight-legged. I thought everything had six legs. Maybe uh, they were six-legged. <laughs> I, I knew it was a Rice bunch. Bros. <laughs> Thank you for that correction. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I got to call them like I see them on Doc, Mars. Dr. A <laughs> retentive. Uh, so... So let's move on to yes. uh, our Starliner update. Now I, I wrote. Oh, no, you got to say what you you got to say what you I called. Wrote, it in the I wrote on the rundown because I wasn't thinking clearly. It was very late at night, and I I did write Stayliner, but, but <laughs> other people are calling it Stayliner, not us. But you know, now and I followed this online, you know, on a number of Facebook uh, pages and and other forums, and. There are a lot of Boeing defenders out there saying, look, all new spacecraft have teething problems and this isn't unusual. And, hey, you know, SpaceX had that chance to do all that development with the uh, the cargo dragon before they started sending crew up. And there's some truth to that. However, SpaceX was started in 2002. Yeah. Boeing's been in the space trade since the 50s. So it's not like they haven't had a chance to learn how to tie their shoes. What's going on now, Dr. Well, there was a press conference this week (laughs) and we got excited because first of all, it was a teleconference and then late in the afternoon, NASA sent out an updated note to say, no, it's not a teleconference. It's going to be a televised press conference. And when they televise things like we were just talking about, that (laughs) means it's important. And so, and and they're going to announce something like definitive. So I had hoped that that meant a landing date for Starliner and the crew flight test with Butch Wilmore and Sonny Williams on the space station. Uh, They are 50 plus days now into their eight day mission. And uh, and we'll keep on hoping, buddy. Yeah. Unfortunately, you know, uh, my, our, our, my colleague Elizabeth Howell had this great story about like what's going on. You know, the, the, the big announcement is that they're still waiting to finish all of their tests on, on thrusters and, and whatnot. They did say that the 45 day battery limit that they were facing with this, uh, this Starliner, which is, you know, how long the batteries are rated for, that it can actually stay up there for 90 days. So I guess that's doing fine, which by the way, if they stay up there, the full 90 days would have them coming back, uh, like the first week of September or something like that. Now, now, excuse me but, for interrupting, but but I have a question. Yes. You know, we, th- we hear these initial statements and guidelines and then they get changed. Yes. And I presume they are changed because, they, because primarily the engineers and Boeing are saying, well, you know, we said this number before, but that's actually a minimum. There's more than yeah. that. And or are we ex- just changing the verbiage to make it feel better? That's exactly what I think it was Steve Stitch in the in the in the press conference said. He said, Hey, 
I guess we kind of made a mistake when we said it was an eight day mission because really we meant <laughs> no, really we meant that at least eight at days. least an eight day mission yeah. and it could go for longer. And remember demo two, that first crewed flight with star, star, uh, uh dragon. I was called star. Yeah. Um, that was a two month mission and they, they, but they, they said, Oh, we will extend it. If it looks fine, we could extend the mission. And then they made a very definitive call. Um, th there, there are questions about why they, it's so nebulous. Why can't they just say, we'll come back home at this point in time. In fact, uh, in the Atlantic and it's behind a paywall. I'm sorry that we can't show it. Uh, but Marina Corrin, the space reporter over at the Atlantic has a very gr good piece there. Um, about how NASA needs to give a spin uh, about this mission because mm. you know if just just the f for for you and for me I think it looks like hey this mission went up the spacecraft is working maybe not as smoothly as we wanted it to work so we have to make sure it's okay but it's working at an acceptable rate for now and we'll bring yeah. them back when we're really sure that it's safe to do so and that's nice and clear Right. I, right. okay. That, you know, it's, it went up there. It's a bit spotty. We want to make sure that it's, that it's, it's okay. They'll come down in the meantime. They are safe. They are not stranded. It, it would have been nice if they just said that, you know? Um, but, but, you know, we, we can bring them back if there's an emergency. That means that they could come back if anytime they wanted, if they had to. Um, so they're not really stuck in space. You see a lot well, of those headlines. And I think it's yeah. very frustrating. Um, it, it's got to be. And it's not like it's lost hull integrity or power or that the life support's gone out or something. And these problems are, are small and kind of incremental. And uh, the spacecraft works. But so at the same, but at eventually. the same time, they said they were going to come down after like a whatever. I think next time, put a target landing date out before you launch into space, so that people can measure yeah. that, right? But then, or or put a target landing month out. Yeah, yeah. Or maybe and, in this case, a quarter. Okay, I just had and, to get and, one last day again. No, um, well, well, and, and but to your point, they 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 didn't say. A landing month or yeah. a landing date this week. You know, they just said that they they they've they've ironed out some processes that they are going to do and they are not going to do uh, after undocking. They will not do manual uh, thruster firings because they want to preserve the lifetime of the thrusters after undocking. Um, they've got more tests out in White Sands to finish because there's some deformation stuff with the thrusters they want to look at. So they've got they've got stuff to to figure out. Meanwhile, Sonny Williams, Butch Wilmore. Just enjoying their time in space, able to get a lot of extra work done for the ISS crew. Uh, so they've got no uh, no dearth of activities to do. They're not just twiddling their thumbs up there. Um, and uh, uh, we'll have to see uh, how that uh, how that goes for them. Hey, if you enjoyed this clip, be sure to check out This Week in Space. You can find us on your favorite podcast app or see the link in the description below. See you there.